Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from ExecuteAutomation.com and welcome to part 4 of our c -sharp for Automation Testing video series. And in this video, we'll be talking about language basics and within language basic, we're going to discuss about classes and object. We have been discussing about classes and object from previous video, which is part A. So before watching this part, I would request you to watch part A since this part is going to be a complete continuation of that part. Alright, so let's get started. Let's talk about multiple classes this time because in last video we, we were talking about a single class and we just wrote a simple hello execute automation program and today we are going to talk about multiple classes and working with multiple classes because in automation testing you will encounter working with multiple classes and some classes will be regarding your page object model and some classes will be where your test cases will be sitting or test methods will be sitting and some classes will be dealing with the utilities or reusable functions so classes are very very important and working with multiple classes are truly important all right so what is this multiple classes and how to work with that Instance object or variables are used to create memory reference of program classes as we discussed in part 3 and they are different each time you create a new object. So there is a keyword called new object within our class and if you create an object using the new keyword then you reserve a memory into the instance variable. So if it doesn't really make any sense, we will talk about that in a minute while we start working with it. While working with multiple classes, we will try to create multiple instance variable to access the members and see how each object maintains its own value. Once again, members, as I said, can be a method, a property, or a variable, etc. So let's quickly create multiple classes and how each object maintain its own copy we will discuss about that so for that let's flip to visual studio all right so this is the same project which we were discussing from our last video and in last video we were just working with a single class called program.cs which was created by default and to recollect we were saying that to execute a code or a project you need to have an entry point within your program and that's the main method and we just wrote this and we just compiled this test by just going to build build solution and we also click the start button to execute the test so we just click the start and we got a output window here and once we hit enter the window just disappears all right cool so now we are going to work with multiple classes so what i'm going to do i'm just going to create a class let's say i'm going to create a very very simple class in terms of selenium i'm just going to talk about Let's say this is the test method or test class one. And within this test class, let's say we have uh, multiple test cases. So I have not talked about the methods yet, but in our last video, we were talking about how the main method act as an entry point. We also saw some of the syntax of main method in the previous video. So I'm going to take this as an understanding for now but we will talk about methods in greater detail in upcoming videos but for now just bear with me I am going to create a very very simple method and I'm not going to really talk about the details of it yet but just a very very simple method here and I'm going to give a name as test case one and I'm going to write a console.write line do you see that I just type CW and I pressed double tab then the console.write line automatically appeared for me you can see this C W and you can see it shows me a message in a tooltip saying code snippet for console dot right line. So tap twice to insert the C W snippet. So if I just double tap, you can see that it will insert the console dot right line for me, which is great. And here I'm going to say executing test case one. And then I'm going to let's say create one more method here. And you can see that if I create one more method within the same class, like test case one, we will get a screwy line out there. It says the type test case one already defines a member called test case one with the same parameter type. And again, there is something called parameter type. What is that? Don't worry about it yet because we are still not talking about methods. So for that reason, at least it's saying something like the type test class one already defines a member called test case one. 
So there is a duplicate test case method already exists. So I'm just going to rename this to maybe test case two. And did you see there is a uh, message saying member? It was stating a statement saying member. So within this class, all these methods, properties, and variables, which are we declare here or create in this class, or otherwise called as members. So if you create an object for the test class one, you will gain access to all its members. That's what we're going to see right now. So I'm just going to save by control S, which is pretty same for any automation testing tool, even for your QTP or Windrunner or whatever you name it, right? And then let's go to the program.cs. And this time, instead of using the program P, I'm just going to delete this guy. And here, let's say I want to execute the test case one, which, uh, which is there in my uh, separate class. And I want to execute the test method one. That's the whole intention right now for me. So this is the one which I want to execute. And I want to also call this test case two. Okay, cool. So let's do this. Let's say I want to execute that particular method. So how do I access that? So maybe you can think like this test class one. If I just type this, it just brings me test class one. And it also shows something like class C sharp basic dot test class one. What is this C sharp basic? Again, this is a namespace. So don't worry about it yet. We will be talking about namespace in greater detail in upcoming videos of this video series. But for now, just remember that namespace is like a folder. And since both of these class files are sitting inside the same folder, it just brings me up the class name without doing anything again without doing anything what is that don't worry about it we'll still talk about that all right so test case sorry test class one or uh, maybe class one and you can see that if i just give class is a reserved keyword you cannot use a variable as class here right so don't use it test class one class one is equal to did you see i'm just typing a keyword here new and this new keyword is a reserved keyword once again which is mainly used to create an object for a type and the type here is our test class one right and if i just leave it as it is it shows me a message saying he expects a semicolon and the new expression requires a parenthesis so we should give a parenthesis here and give a semicolon, which is great. So now we have no errors, at least this is good. And now how do I call the method which is available within this class, test class one, which is test case one. So that you can do using this class one dot, do you see that? It brings me up this test case one. This is the method that we created. So I can just call this method once again. And again, I'm just typing in some parentheses there and semicolon. And now let's quickly see if, I, if it really executes. So if I just run this, you can see that it is showing me the message execute, executing test case one and hello execute automation. So this is coming from here. So let's remove this guy. So how to call the other method? You sort it right. Just call this test method two. There we go. Save it and just run this. There we go. Huh. There is one problem. Again, it's not differentiating. Let's go to the test class one dot CS. And here I just copy paste here and that's the problem. So just change to test case two. Let's save it. This is how you can call the members of a different class within this class. Right. And let's do a little more, uh, advanced operation here maybe you will be encountering this problem as well in your automation testing it's not maybe of course you will be uh, i will create a parameter here again if you go to the program.cs you can see that for this main method you have a string argument which is of type array and here is the name of the argument we are going to do exactly the same thing this time as well i'm just going to create a argument here let's say a string uh let's give some value here within this parameter let's call this as 
executing test case one and passed, right? Something like that. So I'm gonna say result. And then if I want to print this variable, which I am passing in to this method into this console.write line along with this string appended, then I can just do a plus result. That's it. If I do this, then you can see that it just prints me whatever I type in there. So I'm just going to give space there, maybe for little td, and I'm just going to paste it right here and make this as two. And let's create the parameters here. There we go. I'm just going to save this. And if I go back to the program.cs, you can see that I will be getting an error saying there is no argument given that corresponds to the required formal parameter result of test class one. So it expects for some kind of parameters into this method because you have created it right here, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pass something like a string like passed and this test case is actually failed. It's completely a ridiculous example, but still just bear with me because we still did not talk about the method yet. So I cannot really deep dive into the methods. So I'm just going to save it for now and I'll just show you what is going to really happen. And you can see that executing test case one got passed, executing test case two and it got failed because you have passed it manually in here. That's what it is printing. And it is printing because if you go to the test class one, this value, whichever you pass into this method as a parameter, that value is being appended here within this particular string and it's printing. That's it. That simple it is. All right. And now I also said in the slide that while working with multiple classes, we will try to create multiple instance variable to access the members of each classes and see how each objects maintains its own copy of the value. So how is this going to happen? So for that, I'm going to change the logic a little bit and you will understand in a minute while I change the logic. It's very, very simple. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a int, a very, very simple uh, variable. Let's say I is equal to zero. And this is a local private variable for me. And you can also define this as private if you want to. And again, private, public, all those access specifier, we will talk about them later in this course, right? And here I'm just going to create a very simple method called public void set value. And this is just going to set a value for the I and the value which you're going to pass from the parameter, right? So I is equal to, oops, it cannot be I, maybe we can change it to value, right? So this is just going to set a value to the I. And then I'm going to create one more method and that's, I'm going to name that as get value. And it's just going to get the value out from the I, right? So console.write line and this time just going to say the value of I is, I'm just going to do something like this, little formatting to make the output little tedier. And then let's go to the program.cs. I'm just going to delete all the existing code except the instance variable. And here for the class one, let's say I'm going to call the set value method and I'm going to set a value for the integer as 20 maybe. And then let's get the value output. Let's see what is the output of it, right? I'm just going to save it. And let's try to run this test and see how it works. All right, so the, the project is working fine and the value, whichever we supplied as 20, is coming right here. So this is the single copy of the members that you can see here. For the class one, you can call all the members and you perform all the operation into that and it's working. Let's say test class one and I'm gonna create a new object called class two and this time I'm going to set one more value as maybe 30 and you can please note that it's class 2 right it's not class 1 and then I'm going to get the value 
out of it save it and run it and you can see that I get a value 20 and 30 which is great and it's not a big deal right it's still the same but what is the magic behind it I said it maintains own copy right what if I again call this class 1 dot get value after this class 2 dot get value you can think that it is overwritten right because you have supplied the value 30 and it's the same variable i here and we're just setting the value like overwriting it and if i run this test you can see that it has the different copy it still it maintains the value of 20 in here and the 30 is from class 2 object right this is how it maintains the copy of its own members and that's why the object is very very important so you can further read about this maintaining of objects state and how this can be achieved in a much greater detail in msdn or any other website but still this is the basic idea and concept behind it so each and every new object maintains its own copy and that's why you can see that it is not overwriting the value but what if I do like this the last example if I maybe set 20 and here I'm setting a value to maybe 50 I'm saving it and if I run this you can see that the second time the value is 50 it's because it sets the value as 20 it gets the value just 20 and then for the class 2 it sets the value as 30 and it get the value as 30 there we go and then it gets the value the last value of that particular class object which is 50 that too is printed so this is how we can work with multiple classes using c sharp thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day